All right, everyone, what is up? One big bugger coming at you, and this is our FTL 101, and we will be doing an in-depth look at the Federation Cruiser. Now, this is the ship that you get for defeating the um, final boss with any ship. Doesn't matter what ship that you... Um, defeat the boss with this is what you'll unlock like the ng cruiser i forgot to mention you unlock the ng cruiser by um just making it to sector five by making it to the fifth sector you automatically unlock the ng cruiser you unlock the federation cruiser by getting to uh the end and defeating the final boss doesn't matter if it's on normal or easy uh this is what you'll unlock now, the Federation cruiser looks like a very large and imposing ship, but in reality, it has quite a bit of weakness to it. Uh, its first major weakness is it only starts with a burst laser Mark II in terms of uh, weapons. You can have up to four weapons, obviously. But you only start with one, and that's the bur burst laser Mark II, which means you only get three laser shots. So, what compensates for this? Well, it is this little item right here, the artillery beam. A, um, it's a slow powering laser that pierces all shields. And the more you bump up its power, the faster it will charge to a minimum of 20 seconds. Excuse me, I need a drink. So, in reality, you can tell already that this is very vital to power up as soon as possible. Uh, but you still need your... Well, I'll get into that after. But yeah. Um, it's a very powerful weapon, especially once you get it powered up all the way. Uh, if you get your ship in a really strong position, it'll be what really helps you take down the final boss at the end of the game. Um, getting a good backup set of weapons for this, in other words, your main weapons down in here, is really important. One of the things about the ship is, of course, the um, aliens that you start with, uh, your starting crew. Uh, you get a human, a mantis, a um, rock, and a NG. So, what I would normally do is I would put the Rockman on the shields, the Mantis on the weapons, and the NG on the engines. Keeping the human as the pilot, that's just, for me, it's, it, it, you know, as your guys level up and they stay on spaces longer, sometimes it can get a little difficult to remember who's on what. Um, so, keeping the Rock guy in shields, Rock shields. Keeping the Mantis, who's better at attacking and fighting, on the weapons. Keeping the Engineer on the engines helps kind of keep that straight for me on this ship. Although, I'm sure a lot of other people have a much easier time of, uh, of going over that. Now, this ship is not the easiest ship to starve out enemies in terms of oxygen, at least in this back part here. Because you have two doors here, two doors here, but then you got to go through this, you got to go through this. So that's quite a lot of area to starve out, especially if they're in your engine room, pilot, doors, oxygen. And again, from the front, easy from this area, but once you get past this first area into your um, sensors and into your shields, in this area, very, very difficult to starve enemies out of oxygen just because of how much ship is between the outer doors and the uh, center point. So it's definitely good to get a repelling crew on this one and definitely important to up, uh, upgrade your doors uh, as soon as possible. Uh, that'll make it much easier of dealing with uh, enemies as well. And your artillery beam um, the, being here is actually a good thing because it makes it easy to starve out enemies uh, and keep them from destroying that. And other than that, you know, you can get your three augments, your standard three augments. If you install a drone system, you can get standard two drones um, to use. Not much else about this ship, so we'll go into it right away. Like I said, I'll put my Rockman on the shields. And the advantage, of course, is starting out with four crew members, so you can man all four spots relatively easily. Power up. 
the burst laser. Now, like I said, I really like to power up the artillery beam before I even start. Take down the med bay, and there, that brings its power down, its charge time down um, to 40 seconds instead of 50. That 10 seconds makes a difference. But that's all I'll power it up uh, in this level. Um, powering up your shields to level 2 and getting your doors to level 2 are still the most important part of this sector. You start out with 16 fuels, 5 missiles even though you don't have a missile launcher, and 2 drone parts even though you don't have any uh, drone control installed. Um, again, not a lot to go with on this cruiser, so we'll just take a quick jump. And, alright, here we have a battle already. So what I want to try and do is actually just go for the weapons and keep the weapons offline. I'll show you the artillery beam. There we go. Weapons are offline for now. And the artillery beam is charging up. And again, they actually s sabotaged, they hacked my ship and took my uh, engines down um, because of the enemy. But having the two bars means I still have engine control, I still have my 15% dodge. Um, the artillery beam is going to fire here in a moment, so we're not going to bother taking the beam weapon offline. And there's the artillery beam. Now, what you just saw, I'm actually glad you saw... This is a um, a drawback to the artillery beam. You saw how the artillery beam kind of like drew across that center line of the ship, but really didn't hit anything. It only kind of hit one room. That Mantis design of ship, that particular design of ship, the artillery beam always fires across that point and always misses, so does very little damage on that kind of ship. So we'll take another jump, see if we can better display the artillery beam. Intervene and defend the outpost. Again, we're just going to see if we can target out the weapons. Ow. Well, so much for that idea. Of course, mantises are terrible at fixing anything. I love how the rock, the rock uh, guys put out fires and fix things. They just pound on them and fix them. That's alright. The artillery beam will fire soon. Not a big deal to have fire there. It's easy to starve out. Oxygen is back up. And there's the artillery beam firing. And you saw just how much damage that did without a problem. Um, boy, that fixed rather fast. And we can close all our doors. Managed to take the weapon offline before it fired. They must have NGs in this thing to be able to fix this stuff this fast, or just putting multiple guys. Well, they have no one fixing their oxygen at the moment. Alright, their weapons offline again. We'll let the artillery beam charge up and finish them off. The artillery beam fires from the front of the ship, not that that's a big deal. There you go, bang, dead. Very powerful weapon, and actually, I, you know, with that much scrap, you can already begin to power up to level 2 shields like that really easily. So this would actually be the, the start of a very good run. Um, but definitely, you need to get more weapons. Obviously, a single burst laser Mark III, uh, Mark II is not going to get you through this uh, entire level. You cannot solely rely on the artillery beam, although um, it is possible... Uh, I wouldn't recommend it just because of the short duration. Uh, the the long duration, even when you have it fully charged up, the long duration it takes to charge, 20 seconds, uh, that's a lot to survive through. Uh, as you can see here, I've already taken a significant amount of damage. Uh, and this just on the first level. Of course, having level 2 shields would obviously very much help that. Uh, but, again, you definitely need to get weapons. I really like my standard loadout, maybe two burst lasers Mark II, a Pegasus missile, and then maybe an ion cannon, a small bomb, uh, a heavy laser, you know, something that takes one power, uh, or if you can get maybe, um, 
you know, maybe even three burst lasers, and then you get another two, you know, another missile weapon that takes two. Or if you're lucky enough to find some kind of Artemis or something like that. Again, try to avoid four bar weapons. They're really, there's, I have not come across a single four bar weapon that is worth um, having it on the ship at all. Now we're going to jump back to the hangar here. And we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at Type B. Um, Nisos, I guess is what you call it. You unlock this by getting one of these, uh, getting two of the, rather, of these three um, unlocks. The Artillery Mastery, get to Sector 5 in the Federation Cruiser without upgrading your weapon system. Um, yeah, I did that. It's not particularly difficult. Let's just hope it's not something you have to rely on. <laughs> uh, diplomatic immunity. While using the Federation Cruiser, uh, use your crew in four special blue events. Uh, and you have to do that by a Sector 5. Basically what that is, is each different crew member that you have on your ship can give you an option to certain events. And those options appear as blue lettering. Such as, uh, I'll give you an example. There's a, uh, a scenario where you come across a space station that's on fire. If you, if you have just regular crew members, uh, you can send them in, try and help put out the fire. You can dock with the station and try and rescue survivors. If you send people in, people could die. Um, if you dock, you could take damage for your ship. However, if you have a rock crew member who rock uh, um, aliens are immune to fire you can actually send it'll give you the option to send your rock crew member in to put out the fire and he'll put out the fire there's no hazards uh you won't lose him and you'll get all the benefits of rescuing the station um another example is uh an automated defense system is um out of whack it, it, you know it's targeting everything it's just gone completely haywire um if you have an ion cannon, it'll give you a blue option to take it out using the ion cannon. If you don't, you can destroy the targeting system from a distance, although you'll get very little reward for that because it's not what the people want. However, if you have an engineer crew member, an NG, he will actually give you the blue option of being able to fix the targeting system in the defense uh, system, and you'll actually get a, a better reward for that. So that's what that means by using the blue event choices. And the final one, which I haven't got, Master of Patience. Use only the artillery beam to destroy an enemy ship while taking no hull damage. That's a little more difficult. Basically, you got to look for a scenario where a ship cannot penetrate your shields at all. And then just let the artillery beam go to work. Um, I, say it's a little, I say that's a little more difficult. The reality is, is it's not truly that difficult. Um... Because there's plenty of scenarios who come with that. I'm just not patient enough to wait for that to happen. It's like, you know what? I just want to get through this sector. Blow that damn ship up. Anyways. The Nisos. At least that's what I call it. A little easier to starve out enemies. As you have your two doors here, two doors here. Which make it easy to starve enemies out in this entire sector back here. But you also get these doors here. Which make it easy to starve out enemies here and in here. So that's three quarters of the ship where it's really easy to starve enemies out uh, of oxygen. So getting level two and even level three doors early on is really strong on the Nisos because it'll really allow you to control borders. You can drive them to where you want. You can hurt them a little bit more. Um, it's much easier to starve them out. The only difficult place to starve out, of course, is weapons and shields way up at the front of the ship. Now, a drawback to the Nisos is right here, the med bay. The med bay is only two spots big instead of uh, three. Now, I know the med bay normally looks four. I think that I think you can fit two in there. God, I, I don't remember. We'll have to find out. If not, then it's only one spot big, but I'm pretty sure they don't do that. Um, the average med bay can take three people in it. So having a smaller med bay means it's more difficult to swap your crew around and heal them up uh, just having the smaller med bay. Advantage to the ship, you have a um, Zoltan with you. A Zoltan's special ability, of course, is they generate one power 
uh, wherever they go. So I could put them, I could put them into the engines and have an extra power for the engines that I never pay for. I also have a slug. Slugs are good for their psychic abilities. They can see what's going on in rooms past them. So if your sensors get knocked out, but you have a fire, you can send your slug crew member around to find it, and he'll see it in the room before he before he enters the room. So it's a lot safer than that. Plus, they give you a general idea of where the enemies are on the opposing ship by putting little dots. Uh, you'll see. So, but again, you only start with three crew members on this. Also, your weapons, even though you have two of them, are a little bit weaker. Do lasers only fire two shots instead of three. And the Leto, which is the weakest missile available, it has a quick charge time, but it only um, does one damage. The Leto is so easy to chew through your missile count you'll be out of missiles before you realize it because it just does so little damage you know it's an okay starting weapon but i would ditch it as soon as possible for just about any other missile launcher i could um save for maybe the big uh four bar one but yeah, the new lasers and the Leto, definitely weak weapons. You definitely have to transition out of them as quickly as possible. So, again, um, oh, it's already powered up to two. I forgot about that. Uh, I'm so used to playing the other cruiser. Yes, your artillery beam starts at two power up, so it has a 40 second cooldown. Um, in this case, might as well just pay out to the shields. Get that extra bar shield. We will send the Zoltan to the engine room and let him power up the extra engine. We shall pay the power bar there, getting our um, artillery beam to charge up that little bit faster. And I prefer to have weapons uh, charged up manned rather I prefer that weapons manned now you start with 16 fuel nine missiles which for the Leto is is easy to go through and no drone parts again level two doors and level two shields as quickly as possible you may even want to try level three doors by the end of sector two transition out of your weapons as soon as possible power up that artillery beam as quickly as possible after you get your level two shields and your level two doors uh, that'll make it a little easier with the weaker weapons uh, to deal with ships yeah we'll jump to this distress i got to admit the ship looks cool i don't say that much already they want fuel well we'll give them fuel we'll take some scrap and payment and that was actually was very painful early on but i find it's very difficult to run out of fuel um, all right these guys want to power up their ftl and they've already got an annoying drone. Now you can see here, I can see where the crew members are. That's the benefit of having the slug crewman. He can, his abilities, his psychic abilities, allow me to see where the crew are, even if I can't see what they're doing. So we put the Leto, and there, we took out the drone control, but we completely missed on our dual lasers. So we're not worried about the artillery beam. <laughs> we missed the dual lasers again, but we've taken their drone control completely offline. And that's all we want to do. We want to keep it offline as much as possible because the beam weapon is not a threat. And then the artillery beam fires and they got away. Forgot to stay on their engines. Like a dummy. I was hoping the artillery beam would take them out before they did that. So we'll try one more time. As you see, I've already used up two missiles rather easily. You know, this ship doesn't have any um, shield, so we're just going to try and take it out this way. So, being very inaccurate on the weapons, uh, I've never really missed as much. There we go. Weapons completely offline. It'd be very easy right now for me to take out this ship, but we're going to let the artillery beam charge up and finish it off uh, just for the sake of doing that. And about to fire. And there we go. Yeah, 
There we go. And we would already be able to... Oh, not enough system power. Huh, I thought I had an extra bar. Uh, and we're one short. Well, that's okay. We'll just power down the med bay. And there you go. Already have level 2 shields uh, that early in the game. So that was really simple. Um, we could even get level 2 doors right off the bat. And bam, there you go. You're pretty much set. Uh, until you get to the third or fourth sector, probably the fourth sector, you could go um, with this layout um, in terms of your shields and doors. Again, transition out of your weapons as soon as possible. The Leto is just not worth it. And the dual lasers, you know, two shots for one power actually isn't bad, but it's still in terms of a weak weapon. It's okay to have, if you're having it back up, stronger weapons like one or two uh, burst laser Mark IIs. Then it's an okay weapon to have. But to have it by itself and the Leto, that's just really, really terrible. So you got to transition out of that as quickly as you can. But... For the most part, it's a little bit of a disadvantage compared to the, the the standard cruiser. Oops. You know, to the um, to the Osprey here. I forgot its name. Um, but it has its advantage. Like I said, starving out crew members easier. Having a Zoltan and a uh, Slug actually kind of help out. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a give and take. Uh, one really doesn't have a, a true advantage over the other, but I find that the Osprey is a little bit easier to use in terms of the cruiser. So, I usually will pick the Osprey over the Nisos. But there you have it, folks. That's an in-depth look at the Federation cruiser. Uh, next time, I believe... I will do the Zoltan Cruiser. Now, I'll tell you right now, I do not have uh, the B uh, layout of the Slug Cruiser. And I do not have the B layout of the Rock Cruiser. Nor do I have the B layout of the Stealth Cruiser. I'm trying to get them. It is not easy. These guys actually have some very difficult objectives um, to do. As a matter of fact, I'll show you. Um, with the stealth cruiser, get to sector eight without jumping into an environmental hazard. In all due honesty, with the advanced technology that this has, the advanced uh, sensors, that's not that difficult, except for the fact, you see long range scanners there, except for the fact that I made a mistake and I investigated an asteroid field, which I didn't know would count as jumping into a bad area. Uh, phase shift. With the Stealth Cruiser, avoid 9 points of damage during a single cloak. That can only happen late game. So you have to get to late game to get that. And destroy a ship uh, at full health during a single cloak in the Stealth Cruiser. Oh boy. I mean, you gotta take a full ship. You gotta take a ship from full health to zero while stealthed. That, again, can only happen in late game. So that makes that really difficult. Oops. Um, the Rock Cruiser. Find the secret sector with the Rock Cruiser. Oh, <laughs> finding the secret sector is hard enough. But doing it, but making sure you specifically do it with the Rock Cruiser to unlock something is nuts. And then defense drones don't do to anything uh, with the Rock Cruiser. Um, destroy a ship. Uh, using only missiles while they have a defense drone deployed. You better hope you have a lot of missiles in order to be able to pull that off. And then finally, is it warm in here? Have your crew kill a burning enemy on their ship while using the rock cruiser. In short, you have to have a crew teleporter. You have to have a fire started on the enemy side. You have to teleport in there and you have to be battling that enemy and have your rock crew kill them while that fire is still going. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. And um, I don't know why I keep doing that. And for the Slug Cruiser, oh, I guess I did get B. Um, 
I didn't realize that. So I, the, I'll be doing that as well. And of course, I still have to unlock the Mantis Cruiser, which is a little difficult because you have to have an upgraded med bay. You have to have a level two med bay. You have to have a crew teleporter. You have to do, you have to take out a ship without destroying it. So you need a crew that's good at fighting. And you need all of this by the time you come across the event. If you come across the event without having it, oof, yeah. And then finally, the, the unidentified cruiser. Oof, boy. Let me go over this one real quick. I don't know if I have before. You need to find a stasis pod. You need to hold the stasis pod on your ship. Um, and you need to be able to take it to the Zoltan homeworld. Once you get to the Zoltan homeworld, an event will happen. You'll get an extra crew member who will point you to the on a, to the uh, hidden sector. The problem is the hidden sector is near the rock homeworld. So if you have reached the rock homeworld before getting to the Zoltan homeworld, you can't get to the sector for no reason whatsoever. But that's not all. First, you have to get the stasis pod before passing the Zoltan homeworld. Then you have to be able to find the Zoltan homeworlds before uh, you pass them. <laughs> and then you got to hope that the rock homeworlds are ahead of you and not behind you. And you need to navigate to them without knowing where they are in order to be able to get to them. So all these factors have to fall in place. You have to find the stasis pod before the Zoltan homeworld. You have to be, you have to jump to the Zoltan homeworlds and hope you don't take a, a, the wrong path to jump to the Zoltan, you know, to jump past the Zoltan homeworlds without ever knowing. Then you have to jump to the rock homeworlds provided the rock homeworlds didn't already go by before the Zoltan homeworlds. You know, you gotta have all these random events fall into place at the same time, and it's just not something that will happen very easily. I almost had it. I almost had it at one point. I found the stasis pod. I got to the Zoltan homeworld. I got the crew member. But the rock homeworld was before the Zoltan homeworld, so I had already passed the rock homeworlds. So, yeah, I kind of got screwed over. Not the easiest ship to unlock. So I will be working on getting the rock. I will be working on getting the stealth uh, alternates. And I will be working on getting uh, the Mantis Cruiser unlocked. So at least I can go over those. And then however long it takes me, I will eventually find the unidentified cruiser. But there you go, folks. That is a look uh, and a little bit extra of the Federation Cruiser, the Osprey, and the Nisos in depth. I hope you're enjoying this um in-depth look at the various ships and I'll be doing the various weapons eventually the aliens uh, as well in our FTL 101 if you uh, do like this I also have a bunch of League of Legends stuff uh, I'm currently doing a road to level 30 on League of Legends uh, on a, um, a Smurf account I'm going to try to see if I can work in a few other games the League of Legends once takes a lot in rendering these videos at about an hour each with only a single computer is a bit of a hassle but you know what well, things will be as things will be it would actually help me if i could get an external hard drive and i could like when my wife's not home uh, using her computer i can unplug the external hard drive and i can plug it into her computer and i can render it on her computer but whatever <sighs> I'm talking too much. If you liked the episode, please remember to subscribe and hit the like button down below. Until next time, folks, this is One Big Bug of Signing Out, FTL 101 in-depth look at the Federation Cruiser. <laughs>